2. This is an example of one of the games I enjoy, 2048. The main problem with games is that you have to play them, and so I have invented the autonomous 2048 playing system so that I no longer have to deal with this hurdle. This system will free up a lot of time for myself to be able to do things like complete my full descent into insanity. This system runs on a series of different technologies, including the deboxed wire box, uh, because the wires didn't actually fit inside the box I made for them, so I decided just have the wires outside the box. There's no problem with this. Uh, it then links up to this system. You can see the solenoids pushing down each of the keys. Over here we can see the power source that was attached to all of this. It uses a bunch of MOF set. It uses some MOF sets in there in order to power the whole thing. And the program is really quite interesting. The program works by taking a picture of our screen every time it makes a move. Then it compares it to the previous picture. If there was no change from the previous picture, that means the move that we attempted was not possible. We tried to move up, but it wasn't possible, so nothing happened. We can then move on to the next thing, which is move left, and then try that, and then move down if that's not possible, and then move right. If all those are impossible, the game is over and the program exits. And then if it ever succeeds, it goes back to trying to push up, so it sort of layers everything together in this top corner in an effective way to play the game. And let's just get a better look at the device itself. This is the key presser end of the device. The wire box end is not interesting. It's a clump of wires and MOF sets. Don't even look at that. It's, it'll give you nightmares. This version runs on a bunch of solenoids that have a central position. Uh, they have a central channel where they all get pushed through and they can be pushed down to activate the keys. And you can see they line up to the different key positions on the keyboard. This links over the top of the keyboard and it'll do, do it in such a way that this is at the right position and you just have to line it up from left to right. Additionally, these bits slide under the keyboard to um, make it very stable and not be able to get you know knocked around and whatnot. Additionally, I have removed the springs from these solenoids so they stay compressed once you activate them. This is to reduce power usage and make it so it's easier for them to be compressed because the keys will automatically push back up. So we don't need to worry about them like needing a spring to get pushed back in the other direction. And the last feature I want to talk about is a sort of uh, backup spoofing system. Because the serial port isn't the most reliable form of communication to the Arduino, you get drop signals and whatnot. We do a backup thing where we men we represent the keys being pressed through Python code uh, when they would be pressed by the m machine. This makes it so they're always pressed even if the machine fails to press the key or the Arduino serial port doesn't pick up the full signal. Or perhaps the power goes out for a second on the Arduino or the system, then it doesn't press. This will automatically press it uh, in another way, sort of as a backup. It's always uh, important to keep these things in mind with serial ports because they aren't 100% reliable, really. You get corrupted bits and whatnot. So even though I have all this backup time, I am in college, and so it takes a while for these videos to come out. So it'd be very good if you could subscribe or comment or like or share because, you know, college and effort. That's how it goes. Um, 